Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy, and this is my Queen Anne condo living room. Uh, joining me on iPhone camera, of course, is the one and only Joe Guppy. Hello. And Joe, tell everyone your full name. Uh, it's Joseph Albert Anthony Andrew Guppy. Good Catholic boy. Thank you, Joe. Uh, okay, so COVID-19 interrupted the regular Art Zone season. Uh, but thanks to the fabulous support of our mothership, the Seattle Channel, we were uh, quickly able to morph into this homegrown version that we are calling Art Zone Phones It In. Now, uh, we've all been sheltering in place for about two months. I feel fine, but I have read a number of articles by experts that say, you know, check in on your mental health, make sure you're kind of staying steady. Uh, so with that in mind, I want to check in with you about something that happened last week. Um, I was on the uh, internet, on the internet, uh, on the Nordstrom website. I was looking at lipsticks. I saw this really nice color of lipstick. And I said to myself, I think that lipstick will make me look like Charlize Theron. So I bought it and this is it. And Joe, what do you think? Spit an image, separated at birth. That's my guy. All right, we've got a really great episode for you. My Zoom interview with SIF Artistic Director Beth Barrett, a poem by Edgar Allan Poe recited by the man himself, and music from the magnificent brass quartet, the Westerlies. And we'll begin with food, specifically lunch. Today's lunch menu, fried pork screws, milk slices, salad sand salad, burrito steam, barbecue push-ups, mangoes best friend go, teenage duck, beef fangs, turkey pants, lemon gropies, buffalo stance, narwhal cream, moist ham straps, science bear, pudding apps. Smothered in butter. comes with liquid fries. See more of John Osbold's spectacular videos and listen to his spectacular library of original music at josebold.com. The 46th Seattle International Film Festival was canceled like so many events due to COVID-19. Well, I recently spoke with SIF Artistic Director Beth Barrett, AKA the queen of the festival, about what the future holds for this beloved Seattle institution. Well, Beth Barrett, hello, Queen. Hi, Nancy. Great to see you as always. So good to see you. Woohoo! Beth Barrett! Woo of course, uh, we've been meeting like this for many years uh, in person on the red carpet on opening night. Look at the little bow tie. Not quite the same thing, but I'm very happy to see your face. It's always good to see you. So the Seattle International Film Festival, um, obviously it's a cornerstone of our cultural calendar, our cultural life. When I got the late March email that it was yeah. being canceled, I wasn't surprised, but I was shocked because it really drove home the impact of COVID-19 in a uh, more real way. Have you been hearing that from people? You know, it's interesting. Um, I've been thinking it. We were pretty early to cancel in the in the calendar, but knowing that you know we had to put the health and safety of our audience and our staff at the paramount, and and knowing that there was no way we were going to be able to have three thousand people at McCaw Hall, working within the arts, especially here in Seattle, has been you know devastating because COVID has been a devastating effect on the arts and cultural organizations here. But also, it's also really hopeful. Everyone is finding new ways to connect to each other and new ways to connect our audiences to the arts. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and part of us are holding on to being really hopeful. Mm -hmm. But it is, it is really real, knowing that that SIF can't happen, that sort of spring cornerstone um, in the calendar, it, it, it does really drive it home. So what is SIF Cinema uh, doing to keep audiences' eyeballs yes. and minds engaged right now? So we launched Virtual SIF Cinema about six weeks ago. 
and that's been going really, really well. We've been able to have some incredible titles and keep hold of them for a number of weeks. And we will continue doing that for the foreseeable future. We also were able to bring back SIP Movie Club. We just had our third SIP Movie Club. Uh, and that's been a, a more discussion-based. And we also were able to relaunch our education department finding some different classes that would work in a virtual setting. You know, uh, Joe and I uh, took the Dave Drummond location event uh, online. Um, it was great, all those Seattle locations. It was really an interesting it was class. super interesting. I've never actually been able to, to attend one of his classes. So I was like, oh, this is great. And I forgot about all those films that were shot here and how directors were representing certain neighborhoods. Um, the man is a font of knowledge. Like yeah. there is no one that knows Seattle quite like Dave Drummond. Yeah, and he speaks extremely well. So as artistic director, uh, you are the public face of yeah. SIF. Um, and you, you, know, you always do exude a very calm and very um, strong and confident uh, persona. Oh, thank you. How are you handling this seismic shift personally? Um, honestly, it's, um, <laughs> it's been really hard because you know, the the people that I work with at SIF, they're my friends and family. They're, you know, we all believe in something. We believe in, in what we do. We believe in film as a connective tissue um, within the world. And it's been really hard not to see them and not to see my other friends and not to see my family. and. You know, the, the world is a very confusing place and to not be able to share that confusion in person with, with people has been really hard. So personally, I am gardening a lot um, and reconnecting to the earth and, <laughs> and discovering spring is a pretty amazing season. I haven't had one for 17 years. <laughs> so every day I walk out, walk out the front door and I'm like, oh my God, it's really nice out. My wife is like, this is what happens in spring. It's, it's always happened like this. I'm like, but I've never seen it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a, there's a little bit of balance to that, but um, I'm super curious what kinds of films are going to come out in 2021 and 2022. Hopefully they're not just all documentaries about pandemic, but how people were able to connect in different ways and how people were able to keep that that sense of themselves when they're by themselves. Yeah, yeah. So at this point, what is the vision uh, for SIF Cinema as an organization going forward? And the piggyback question is, do you think there'll be a festival in 2021? I certainly hope there will be. Um, in, in my grand glorious plans, there is a festival in 2021. Our mission doesn't change. We want to still create those experiences that connect people to incredible film from around the world. And, you know, in, in an ideal world, sure, it's absolutely in person with that giant put tub of popcorn. Um, is it also online? Is it also in small group discussions? Is it also, you know, it, there are so many different ways that it could be. Um, and we just don't know what that looks like. Right, right. But we're open to all of it. Mm -hmm. Well, finally, I always ask you on opening night, I say, yep. I need Beth Barrett's top three movie picks in that year's festival. So let's do a little shift here. What are Beth Barrett's top three movie picks to watch from the online virtual SIF cinema menu? Well, we've got uh, three really great films um, up right now, actually. Um, Andrew Ahn's Driveways, which was um, a big hit in Festival 2019. It's a really amazing tender portrait of, of uh, intergenerational no friendship. You know what I wish? I wish we could do that all over again. <laughs> It'd be a little more deliberate. Uh, take our time. Take a good look at stuff. We also have a brand new film, a documentary called The Painter and the Thief, which premiered at Sundance. Um, about a, a Czech artist who develops a, a very unlikely friendship with the man that um, stole two of her paintings. <laughs> this is destructive. I would ask you regularly to sit here. I can tell you some more about how I got to be a criminal. This guy is often quite self-destructive. 
It feels like that is his way to be seen. You can open your eyes now. Whoa, what the f <laughs> And then because we're honoring over the, over the 25 days of SIF, we're, we're honoring some of the, the past films that have been there, um, been in the festival and been really huge hits. So we're gonna take a look at Lane 1974 from local director S.J. Chiro, and she will be there to discuss you afterwards uh, to discuss her film along with other members of her cast and crew. I told you to leave those roller skates. These are the best things I ever got from the free store. You haven't used them in months, Lane. I can't use them on dirt roads. We can't take everything with us. Don't get attached to material goods, Lane. Big lesson. Kids, this is embracing your freedom. Well, it's so nice to chat with you, and uh, let's just kind of keep in touch and kind of keep you. updated on what's going on. Um, and I do want to uh, show you that I do have your crown. Oh. I've been signing it up, and so. I'm I'm go I'm virtually crowning you right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, Beth Barrett, the queen of many Nancy, things. Thank you. Thank you so much, Beth. Thank you so much. Thanks, Take Nancy. care of yourself. Yeah, you too. This year, the queen of SIF, Miss Beth Barrett, everybody. Here she is. <laughs> da, 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 da. Check out SIF Cinema's online offerings at SIF.net. Our musical guest is The Westerlies, a nationally recognized brass quartet founded in Seattle. And they recorded this song from four different locations across the U.S. of A. Hey, Nancy. Willem de Cook here with The Westerlies. We're in four separate places right now. I'm currently in Colorado in quarantine with my girlfriend and her family. And Riley's in Chicago and Andy and Chloe are both in Brooklyn but we wanted to share some music with you. So we each recorded our own part to one of our favorite songs separately, and then we put them all together. So uh, we hope you and everyone else out there in our hometown of Seattle enjoy uh, our take on the traditional sacred harp hymn, Weeping Mary. <laughs> Thank you. 
The Westerlies are teaming up with the civic action organization Common Purpose to present Fight From Home, Grassroots Activism Volume 1, an advocacy event for safe voting via mail-in ballots during the pandemic and beyond. More information is at westerliesmusic.com. And now, a friendly round of cat boxing. Hang in there, Betty and Casey. All right, Seattle actor Bradford Farwell, playwright Brian Willis, and director Megan Brewer have created a compelling one-man show entitled An Evening with Edgar Allan Poe. Well, joining us now with a few words and a poem is the man himself. This next poem was published some few weeks ago, and before I recite it for you and leave your gracious company, I would ask you to close your eyes and imagine a world without literature, without theater or art, without painters, poets, lyricists. This new world is ready to be inspired by art, art that will embolden a generation to achieve all that is within its grasp. Now in your mind's eye, Imagine the next Tennyson, Coleridge, Elizabeth Barrett Browning. A dream within a dream. Take this kiss upon thy brow, and in parting from you now, let me this much avow. You are not wrong to deem that my days have been a dream. But if hope has flown away in the night or in the day, in a vision or in none, is it therefore the less gone? All that we see or seem is but a dream within a dream. I stand amid the roar of a turf-tormented shore, and I hold in my hand grains of golden sand. How few, and yet how they creep through my fingers into the deep. Oh God, can I not save one from the pitiless wave? Is all that we see or seem but a dream within a dream? All my days have been a dream. I thank you for your gracious company, and I will see you again. An Evening with Edgar Allan Poe featuring Bradford Farwell is coming to a stage near you, hopefully soon. More information is at eveningwithpoe.com. We started the show with John Osbold's video lunch menu, and we're going to close the show with today's lunch menu at the Guppy House. Start with two slices of white bread. Start with two slices of multi-grain whole wheat high fiber bread. Next, apply a thick layer of salted butter. No butter. Then lay down a generous portion of the salted, crunchy, no stir peanut butter. The secret to no stir is the added sugar and palm oil. Then lay down a generous layer of unsalted, crunchy, stir it up yourself, nothing but peanuts, peanut butter. And finally, lick off the excess peanut butter, mmm, and spread on some old fashioned, sugar sweetened strawberry jam. And finally, remove the excess peanut butter and spread on some fruit sweetened, no sugar, strawberry jam. 
And, and that's, that's how, how you make, make the perfect peanut butter, butter and, and jam, jam sandwich. sandwich. And that does it for this episode of Art Zone Phones It In. Thanks so much for dropping by. And until we meet again, remember the three S's. Stay healthy. Healthy. Stay sane. Sane. Stay connected. Connected. Have a great week. Let's eat. Isn't it, um, isn't it Charlize Theron of a French mm -mm. Theron? Mm -mm. I saw her on Between Two Ferns, mm. and she said Theron, like Heron. Oh, like Heron. So, mm. I heard it from her. Right. Yeah. Do you really think this lipstick makes me look like her? Well, truthfully, not, not really, but that's because my mental image of Charlize Theron mm -hmm. is from the movie Monster. So she's mm. kind of bloated and dirty and... Well, I mean, that's not the look I'm going for. Yeah. yeah. She, mm. she did win an Academy Award. Mm, that's true. Yeah. Fortunately for me, you don't look like a serial killer wielding a massive handgun. <laughs> Killing men. <laughs> Yet. Mm. Always a yet. It's always a yet. <laughs>